Good morning, beautiful people. Dominique here with another video. Today, I'm going to teach you how to change all fuel injectors on a 2005 Chevy Malibu. Tools needed. Ratchet, 8mm socket, 10mm socket, flathead screwdriver, and a 1-inch wrench. Alright, since I don't see a port on a fuel rail to release the pressure from the gas line. All right, the fuel pump fuse and relay is located in the trunk. So pop the trunk and you, when you let this little flat back, that's a cover that you have to remove. And there's a tab on top. Let's pull it down and that'll let it down. This is your fuel pump relay. And this is your fuel pump fuse. All right, so now I'm gonna pull the fuse and the relay while the car starts. So car, start up the car. And while the car is running, remove the fuse and let the car run until it dies. That's how you relieve the pressure from the gas line. Also, you can remove the gas cap just to check for any extra pressure. And you just get on the inside and just try to start it one more time, just turn it over a little bit. And that should relieve the pressure from your fuel line or depressurize it. All right, so you wanna remove this battery cover. I already done popped the tabs. You got tabs all the way around here. And you're going to need to remove the negative terminal with an 8 millimeter socket and wrench. And you come back over to this side with a flathead screwdriver. And remove that screw. Unloosen the holes. Gonna need a flathead screwdriver to stick in here and pop that gray tab on out. So you press down on the mass flow sensor tab and wiggle it out. Be sure to disconnect these holes with a pair of pliers. And when you disconnect the holes, inspect it for any leaks. Make sure there's no holes in here. You don't want any leaks. I found that it'd be easier just to remove this one. I'm gonna remove the hose completely so I can inspect it myself. Like I said, I'm gonna remove the hose. See, look at that. This hose gotta go. It was already worn. So it's best to just take the entire thing off and check it yourself. But if you feel like your hose is in good shape, then you could just remove one of the clamps and just slide, just slide one of the end of the hose off and continue. All right, so since you already unloosened the clamps, you're disconnecting the mass airflow sensor and disconnected that little small hose. You can go ahead and pull up and it should come right up. See, one end came off already. And now you can see the throttle body. All right, so since the throttle body is visible, any time the throttle body is visible, you don't want any dirt, debris, or anything like that to get in it. So go ahead and cover it up with a rag or a plastic bag, anything, anything to keep the dirt out. All right, so the fuel rail is held on by two screws. See, one, where's the dog on that? Two. But before you remove the fuel rail, be sure to be wearing goggles and some gloves. And I'm gonna plug both ends up, the plastic bags. All right, so to remove the two screws, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. I forgot the 
plug this or wrap this up too. You don't want any dust or debris or anything to get in there either. All right, there we go. All set. All right, before you begin, be sure to let the engine cool off first. Because when you're dealing with fuel and the engine is hot, you don't want it to ignite and cause a fire. All right, now you have to unplug the throttle body positioning sensor. Remove this gray clip first, then press down on the black tab and unplug it. Don't want to unplug the throttle body position since I'm sorry. Then you press down on the tab and unplug it. And just set it out the way. All right. So to remove this, gonna need a one inch open-ended wrench. All right, to remove this fuel rail, just wanna take two hands, one over here and one over here, and just pull it back on the fuel rail. And it should come right out. You're gonna need to remove this wiring loom they just got a clamp down there and also you need to remove this one that's on a fuel rail and I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver to do that and to remove this wiring loom right here I just took a flathead screwdriver and once you pry this it'll just open right up at the top and take a flathead screwdriver open the bottom and it opens right up now the wiring loom is out the way and you can go ahead and pull your fuel rail out disconnect this little rod you're gonna see a little gasoline come out this is why I say make sure the car is cold because you don't want gas in a hot car to ignite it's just not a good idea and now you could go ahead and remove the injector that's attached to the fuel rail. And these are the injectors. Oh yeah, it was time. So now all I gotta do is disconnect the harness from each injector. All right, so what you wanna do is remove this green tab, this tab right here, this gray one. You just press it in with a screwdriver or pull it out. And you can unplug the harness. This is what I did on the first one. Gave me a hard time. Here's the harness. All right, this one got unplugged. And now to unplug this one. Now that all four of the harness is unplugged, you can go ahead and fully remove the fuel rail. But be careful not to turn it upside down because there's still a little gasoline inside the line. 
And if you do, turn it over, try to put it in a bucket or something. And I'm gonna take it in and match it up with the new injectors. So you wanna start taking these boots off. I already got one of them off. Then you wanna find you a, a glass to put them in and soak them in some gas. Gas gasoline. And down to the last one. It's like some of them are difficult to get off. <clears throat> and I'm gonna fill this glass up full of gas and let it soak so I can reuse them again on the new injectors. See, I got them all off. Ready to soak them. And I'm going to let that sit for quite a while. Probably like over an hour. Then I'm going to come back. I haven't even been two minutes. And you see all the dirt coming up off of there. Alright, I'm going to try to get in closer. So I'm going to pop these clamps. to remove the fuel injector. And I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver to do that. See, you just pry it off until it pops. All right, got one. Yeah, so you just pry it. And once you pry it off and it unclap, you can just turn, uh, turn the clamp around and it comes off. See, I got one end off with the screwdriver. I got the second one, third one, and a fourth one. Now all I have to do is remove all four injectors. Make sure you save your clips. The new injectors do not come with new clips. Save your clips. All right, so since the clips are removed, I can go ahead and just pull the injectors out. They should slide out, but most likely they won't. You probably have to fuss with them. All right, so I got one injector out. And you have to wiggle it left and right and pull on it in order to get it out. Injector two. And check to make sure your O-ring is not stuck in there like this one was. That's the third one. And once again, I got another O-ring stuck in there. It's okay if they damaged. I'm gonna have them replaced anyway. And that's the final injector. All right, so get your new injector. Take your dipstick and get some fresh oil. And what you wanna do is, you wanna oil this O-ring at the top. And I recommend oiling this O-ring at the bottom also. That way, when you put them back into the rail, the O-ring won't tear and you won't have problems. But ha and once you do that, you just stick it back up into the fuel rail. But while you're putting it in the fuel rail, like turn it in there to get it. Don't just stuff it in there straight. I turned the left and right and pushed it in there. All right, sorry, my phone was dying, so I went on ahead and put all the injectors on. But like I said, when you put on your O-rings, the top and bottom, make sure you lube them both, because the front, the top is gonna go inside this fuel rail. The bottom has boots on there that I took off, and I'm gonna put the boots on next. All right, so now it's time to put on four boots at the bottom. The rubber gas is gonna face down and of course, like I always say in every video, if you have a rubber gasket or an O-ring, just put a little oil on it, it won't hurt. I got the first one on. It goes on pretty easy. Like I said, since you oil the um, bottom O-ring on a fuel injector, it makes your boots much easier to put on. All right, so now I have all the boots on and make sure you oil, oil these O-rings up really good because this is gonna go inside your car. And you don't want to have a problem or tear them trying to put them in. So oil them up really good. All right, so I didn't mention it earlier. If you have a vacuum, 
Let me see I can move out the way so you can see. If you have a vacuum, try to get some of that dirt out because you really don't want it to fall where your injector slots are. All right, now it's time to reverse the process. Since my gas line is over here and the plugs is in the front, I'm just going to stick it down just like that. Exactly how I saw it. All right. So once you get it in there, just press it down. And if you oiled up them boots pretty good, like I told you, you shouldn't have a problem. Let's make sure it's down in there good. And now it's time to plug up these harness. Try to get it in a, a little bit so you can see it. All right, once you got the fuel rail in, go ahead and plug up the throttle body. to snap and you can put your gas line back inside the fuel rail swing this big old nut around tighten it up with your hand and then you go back and get your one inch open-ended wrench and tighten up this gas line So you get your open-ended wrench, one inch, and you make sure this is tight. Now you can go and uncover everything. I'm about to get ready and put the main hose back on. You can plug up your mass air flow sensor. Check your hose, put it back on. And put this in on the throttle body. And just take your flathead screwdriver and just tighten them up. I almost forgot about the clamps on the guardrail to hold this wiring loom down. Just put the wire in there, open it up, and close it. There it is, snapped on. And just do the same for this. All right, so get your little vacuum line and put it back on the intake. Get a pair of pliers and put your clamp back on. All right, so I'll put the hose on. I'm gonna have to trim it down a little bit later though, but this is just for right now. All right, so finally, connect the negative terminal to the battery and tighten it up with a eight millimeter socket and ratchet. And now you can go back in the trunk and replace your relay, your fuel pump relay. Once you replace the fuel relay, close the box. Make sure it's all the way in there. Bro. And you want to give it a start once everything is complete. Oh, and put your battery cover back on. Give it a start. Make sure you have no leaks around this fuel rail. Check your fuel rail really good while it's started. Make sure you have no leaks. And that's how you change all fuel injectors on the 2005 Chevy Malibu 2.2 Ecotech engine. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.